Hello, welcome to Portal's portfolio series where we will have readings and interviews with student writers and published authors from Vancouver Island University and around the country. We'll talk with them about what it takes to be a writer in the ever-changing world of publishing. Portal 2021 is currently being designed by Chantal Callitz and all 104 gorgeous color pages will be shipped off to the printer on March 24th. It'll be on newsstands in late May. Stay tuned for information about our 30th anniversary virtual launch to be live streamed on Facebook in mid-April. We'll feature contributor readings and merch such as new t-shirts, mugs, and book bags to mark three decades of publishing in the heart of Vancouver Island. Hello, everybody. I'm thrilled to have Claire Gordon with me today on the portfolio series. Claire is a third year student at Vancouver Island University, where she is doing a Bachelor of Arts degree with a major in English. Claire was born and raised on Vancouver Island, and the influence of nature can be seen in her writing as she works in the parks. She spends a lot of time in the backcountry. Claire's writing has been published in the NAV at VIU and in Canadian Yogi. This year, Claire's poem, Dig the Dogs In, will be published in Portal 2021, due out next month. And today, Claire Gordon joins me from Cumberland. Claire, welcome to the Portfolio Series. Hi, thanks for having me. So your background in parks and writing about nature, um, we have a lot in common there. Um, but how did you get into writing? What made you start doing creative writing? Um, well, I've always been interested in writing. Um, when I was young, I'd write short stories and uh, lots of journal entries. Um, I did a little bit of creative writing in high school and a bit in English, and I really started to get interested in writing a bit more seriously and writing poetry last summer um, when I was working out on the North Coast Trail. I was just really inspired by everything I was seeing and uh, had a lot of time in the evenings <laughs> and not much else to do. So uh, I wrote a lot then. Yeah, I filled up like eight journals that summer. Do you find it a way to kind of log and interpret what you're seeing out in nature or how your experience of nature? Yeah, I think so, definitely. Um, yeah, and I think it acts as a way to, for me anyways, to cultivate um, or understand the relationship that I have with nature and where I fit in there. Mm -hmm. um, are there any authors or books that have really inspired you? In general or like poetry specific? Uh, whatever, it, either way. Oh, uh, yeah, tons. Um, poetry specific, um, I, I'm just getting into it. It's really new to me. So the poet that I really quite like and read a bit last summer is uh, Gary Snyder. And books that have inspired me Um, well, one of my all time favorite books is uh, After Hamlin by Bill Richardson. It's like a, a children's book kind of or like a young teens book. Nice. Um, and you, you also write nonfiction as well? Um, a little bit. I, I for the article I did for the NAV, I did a few and that was creative nonfiction. And uh, yeah, I guess from my journaling, that's Bit of nonfiction. Is your nonfiction also based in nature and about stuff like that? It is, yeah. It's usually um, the pieces I had published were about my experiences in nature and how those experiences helped me um, navigate other challenges in my life and um, understand my process of thinking and digesting various emotions like an exploration. Yeah. Just like poetry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what attracted you to VIU? Um, the study abroad program, actually. I um, was kind of deciding between VIU and UVic. And uh, yeah, VIU 
um, the study abroad, abroad program just seemed really awesome. And I had intended to study in Japan last year, um, but for various reasons that didn't pan out. And now because of the pandemic, um, I probably won't be taking advantage of that program, but that's okay. That's too bad. So your poem, Dig the Dogs In, will be coming out next month in Portal. Um, would you read us your poem, please? Sure, I'd love to. Dig the dogs in. Salt soured sweat drips down bent spines. A sticky pitch that trickles then chills under loose layers of wet wool. Hey greenhorn, he says with a wave, then laughs and sips milky black tea from a battered thermos. He shows me the ropes the old fellow with Pacific blue eyes, teases the rookie. No flunkies in falling. I spent years at the landing earning my keep, peering over timber, tightening chokers around necks of hemlock and fur, limbing to buck up profit. Now I'm on the ground looking up at this sweet cedar, selflessly offering fragrant pulpy flesh. Easy, Slacky, read the wood. Here's the trick. Use wedges to get that tree where you want her to go. He'd eye up his claim, a colossal old growth. Crank the saw in one swift pull a burst of bicep, an open chest. He'd stoop the bar level at her trunk and dig the dogs in fern, blade to throat. She'd snap, creak and groan as she fell, empty thud on the soft earth below. I says you're shaking worse than that tree you dropped there, Greenhorn. The whirring teeth cut deep in the wood, in my bones. Breakers gnashed into motion. His bucking pants, threadbare and torn, hang heavy on stretched shoulder straps. Bumper spikes brace old bones for kickbacks until the last tree falls. Thank you. Uh, one thing that struck me right away about this poem is the, the sense of directionality. The, you have the sweat drips down, um, peering over timber, looking up. And it, is that something that you really were trying to encompass in this poem? Is it like you have the tall cedars that are above you and they're coming down and you're looking up and does, there's all this direction going on? Yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that there's that line, uh, easy slacky, read the wood. And it seems like the speaker is reading the, the old logger, the veteran logger. <laughs> the logger is telling them to read, read the wood and he's reading the wood. But the speaker is reading is really watching the logger and reading the logger to get a sense of the, so there's kind of this almost step back from from it mm -hmm. is that um is that what inspired you to write the poem or what what was the inspiration here um i look kind of what you're saying I, the idea of mentorship really inspired me to write the poem but um it's it's a poem in tribute to my grandpa so the the mentor in the poem is my grandpa and the the rookie or greenhorn is um the embodiment of what I imagine it would be like to to be in that role of you know being a, a faller for the first time. I definitely got the sense that like at first when I was reading this I thought it might be sort of an indictment of logging or 
but it, it's really not that at all. It's just um, the imagery of of a man, you know, teaching another person how to fall logs, and it's not really criti criticizing logging. Um, it's just showing this relationship, which is really interesting. Yeah, thank you. I um, yeah, I certainly the intention certainly wasn't to criticize logging, and um, I my grandpa was a logger, and my dad worked in the industry as well, so. Um, I've been around it all my life and now working in parks we if there's danger trees in campsites pre-season we get loggers to come in or fallers to come in and take them out and having conversations with those fallers about their relationship with the trees and their perspective on the industry was really eye-opening and uh yeah I think you know I'm Industries based on greed are, of course, not good and problematic in many ways, but I think that there's a lot more to these kind of blue collar jobs than meets the eye. Um, I noticed the, the form you, you like, you use the um, five line stanzas throughout. Is that, was the form something that came to you through while you were writing the poem or do you often write in in stand stanzas of that length um the the form was suggested by the editors i worked with which was um had been such a cool experience and and uh yeah incredibly insightful and they're really amazing um yeah, I guess I do normally write in shorter stanzas, although this is the longest poem I've ever written. I I read your original submission before the interview and I noticed that the your on your original submission the lines were much longer. Yeah. I mean, this totally. one was much shortened. How did, how was that for you for editing for really slicing down those those line lengths? Oh, it was such a cool process. Um yeah, my my editor, Kaylee, when she first got in touch with me, she I just remember in her email, she was like, um, read these edits and then step back from it because, you know, as writers, sometimes we're so attached to to our lines that we don't really see what could make it stronger or what what's necessary to take away. So I really appreciated that. And uh yeah, it was a, a really cool and fun process, shortening it down and making it more precise and still um, trying to trying to keep the, the essence of the message or the feeling that I wanted to get across. Do you find that the editing process changed your writing um, process after that or? Yes, definitely, in a good way. Yeah, it, it made me... Um, or I think it made me more, um, a little more critical of my work in a good way, like, you know, um, trying to be less attached to it and trying to look at a piece a little more objectively. Have you taken any workshop classes for poetry? No, I actually just took my first poetry class last semester. So oh. the fall 2020. And was that a workshop class? Were yes. You? Okay. So you've gone through a bit of people reading and giving you sort of tips and stuff, mm -hmm. criticisms. Um, what does your writing process look like? What does a day, um, a writing day for Claire Gordon look like? Oh. <laughs> it varies a lot. Um, I'm just, I'm having this image of, and I can't remember where, where I watched it, I think it was a video, but it's James Baldwin talking about his writing process and how he like sits down in front of the typewriter and then writes nothing and gets up and goes for a walk and gets a cup of coffee and comes back and, you know, writes a sentence. And, but so when I'm, when I'm writing at home, that is my process a lot. Like sometimes you know, I'll have an idea and I'll just stare at the screen a bit and go for a walk and come back. And, um, but I think the, where I write the most or where I get the most 
notes and the majority of my content is when I'm working and I'm out on trail. So that's where it flows a little more naturally. And then when I'm at home in front of the computer, it's more editing and, you know, putting things in a, in an order that makes, makes it cohesive, I guess. Do you find you write more in spurts or do you have like a daily practice? Uh, yeah, I write every day. Um, I journal a little bit every morning and, uh, I mean, because I'm in literature classes at university, I am doing writing homework every day. Um, and I do try to write a little bit of my own stuff every day, even if it's just, you know, a couple of lines or, or a couple ideas. Do you find that you write more in notebooks or do you write a lot into uh, straight into the, the computer? Notebooks for sure. Yeah. I'm, uh, I feel, I get writer's block when I'm writing on a computer. Yeah. When I'm using my hand, it just flows a lot more naturally. Yeah. I think there is uh Stephen King's book on writing. He, he talks about writing faster than your self doubt. So <laughs> off, you have to, you have to outrun your self doubt. So if you're writing in a free hand in a notebook, you can really, you know, write quickly before you really second guess yourself or try to go back and start editing what you already wrote. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, where do you like to write? Where? Mm -hmm. Like physically? Yeah, if you're, I, you said that you write out in, when you're out in the field. Um, actually, do you, when you're out in the field, I, I carry a field notebook with me often when I'm working out in the field. Um, and so yeah. I write a lot in a, like a waterproof yeah. notebook. You do the same? Exact same, yeah. Yeah. Nice. So usually. Uh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um sometimes I'll like get an idea while I'm on trail and just have to like put my backpack down and make a couple notes real quick but usually um I'm writing at the end of the day so I'll either be in my tent or if the weather is nice I'll be sitting outside and um not always, but I generally find that I feel more a lot, I feel a lot more inspired to write at the end of the day when I'm working along the coast rather than when I'm in the mountains. Um, I'm not totally sure why, maybe the bugs have something to do with it, but so usually by the water on the beach. Are you writing down just um, like descriptions of images or things people said or um, what kind of? I find when I'm out in the field and I start writing, I'm, I'm mostly kind of logging imagery of kind of what's around me. Mm -hmm. Is that what you do? It's a bit of everything. Sometimes I'll do that. Yeah, lots of listing. Um, or if I have a funny encounter with someone, then I'll write about that. Um, sometimes I would just write, I would start writing a journal entry and it would kind of evolve into like a bit of a poem or like a bit of a story. Um, yeah, just whatever I feel inspired by that day. I guess it changes quite a bit. Who, who do you show your work to first? <laughs> um, who do I show my work to first? I show it to my aunt and my mom quite a bit. Um, and then I have one of my friends, I show my work to him. But in school, sometimes more where people like my classmates see my work first. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good that you have people in your circle to, to circulate your work to and get, get some reader feedback right away. Definitely, yeah. That must, must help. Mm -hmm. um, how much do you submit? You, you've been published in The Nav and Canadian Yogi. Mm -hmm. um, do you have you submitted a lot to magazines? Um, no, not yet. But uh, this semester, I've been starting to submit more. So I'm kind of working my way through um, a couple of magazines and journals to submit to, working on portfolios. Nice. Um, how do you handle rejection? Um, well, I haven't gotten my first rejection yet or letter yet. So uh, how will I handle it? I'm not sure. Um, but 
you know, going into it, I recognize that that's part of the process. So it's a good thing. Such a writing, such a personal thing. So to have, have your work go put yourself out there and then have, have yourself be rejected is can, <laughs> can be tough on people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would imagine it would be. That's like anytime you're presenting some sort of art, you know, it is very, um, it's like a part of you. It is pretty vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for being on the series. I, I really appreciate it. Thanks for answering all these questions. Oh yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome. And good luck with your future submissions. Thank you. Take care. Thank you for watching the Portal Portfolio Series. Portal is a literary magazine published by students at Vancouver Island University's Creative Writing and Journalism Department on the territories of the Snonemuk, Cowichan, and Tla'aman First Nations. For more information about Portal's Portfolio Series, please visit portalmagazine.ca.